Welcome to the sixth episode of the Linux command line Ultimate Tutorial Series. In this episode, you will learn how to select file names based on patterns of characters. This approach is also known as wildcards or globin. Let's get started. Here I have created several files with different file names to show you how can you select these files based on the pattern of the file name. For example, the simplest will be to separate these files by the extension. As you can see, there are some files with CSV extension and some files with TXT. And the simplest way to separate them would be to type ls, then you put star sign, which means any character and any number of characters. Then you put dot and you type txt. Now only txt files are listed. If you press the key up on your keyboard, you can scroll back in your history and then you replace txt with csv. Now only csv files are listed. You can place this star in any other place. For example, if you type ls, small f and you put star, it will print all files which start with the letter f, as you can see now here. So the star means to use anything. But let's say we want to use specific characters. For example, you want to list only files which start with the letter F. You type ls, then you need to type these square brackets, and here we will put capital F and small f. And then we put star here. So this will print all files which start with either capital F or small f. And as you can see, we have file names which start with uppercase f and lowercase f. Following the same principle, we can also print file names which do not start with uppercase f and lowercase f. To do that, you just need to put exclamation mark here, which means to print the opposite. And now we should print file names which do not have these letters. And as you can see, now we print some file names that start with digits or those which start with something else but not capital F and small f. So I press Ctrl L to clean the screen now. But you can also select file names even with more sophisticated conditions. For example here, if I list all the files which start with capital F, you can see I have some files which also has letters here, ST, and some has just one letter here, S. And some of them also have digits. For example, if you want to print file names which have file in their name, then there is any character, but you don't know which one, but you know that there is only one character. So you type question mark, you type dot txt. So this will print all files which have file in their file name, any character, and then dot txt. And as you can see, now this file name has been excluded because it has two characters here. So if we put two exclamation marks here, it will print us only that file. Yes, that's true as you can see here. So the star sign means any character and any number of characters, but the question mark means only one character. You can also use such things as classes. For example, if you want to print file names which start with a letter, and you want to exclude those which start with digit. To do that you type ls, then you again put square brackets to define the condition you want to use, and here you can put the class name. So you type square brackets again, then you put columns, and we write here alpha. This means to use alphabetic character, and then we put star. What goes after this alphabetic character doesn't matter for us. And as you can see now, it printed everything except these file names, which come with digits. You can type exclamation mark here, and it will print only those which start with a digit. Or it will be equivalent if instead of alpha class, you use digit class. You see, it prints only files which start with a digit. So when you define the class, it means to use one character of this class. And you need to put it in square brackets, because this is your condition. But you can also define multiple condition. For example, let's say you want to print file names which start with digit or with letter F. Now as you can see it prints all the files which start with zero, these files and also few files that have F at the beginning of the file name. And you can define as many conditions as you want. 
For example, you can add one more condition here. Let's say we can add class upper. So this will print any file which starts with a digit with small letter F or with any upper letter. And I need to put some columns here. Yeah, now it adds these file names to this list. So this is a list of most commonly used classes. So let me summarize everything you have learned in this episode. So you type any command, it doesn't have to be a less, I just use a less to show you how it works. But you can also use command copy, move or even remove. But be careful with the remove command, because you can remove files which you didn't intend to remove. And then you specify conditions you want to use to group file names. When you put star, it means to use any number of characters, so it will print all files which start with the name file and end with expression txt. But if you put question mark here, it will use any character, but only one. So you see, files which have several letters after file are not included here. Then you can also use list of characters which you want to specify on some specific place. And to specify this list, you need to use these square brackets. And then you write, for example, s and number one. So you see, it printed the file names which have number one and letter s there. If you add star here, it will also include all file names which have any other character after these characters. So the square brackets here is applied only to one character. But you can specify as many conditions as you want here. For example, you can also put star here. And let's say we write s, one, and you can also add classes here. But class is also in square brackets. So that's why you have these double square brackets, which may be a little bit confusing. But this outside square brackets specifies the condition you want to use. And these inside square brackets, they define the class. So let's say we use class upper here. So it will include file names which have S, 1 and upper letter in the end of the file name, but before the file extension. So now you see this file name has also been included because it has letter T here. So in this way, in these square brackets, you can define as many conditions as you want. For example, if I add small letter t, it will include even more file names. So we have included this file name before, but now we also have this file name, which has small letter t. So let me know if it's still unclear in the comment section below. Knowing how to use these patterns gives us a lot of power when you're using the command line. So after watching this video, I think you can consider yourself a powerful command line user. Thank you for watching.